Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so excited that you decided to connect today. Right now, grab something to take notes with as we begin today's message. Well, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing today? Well, I am Pastor Michael. I am the Celebrate Recovery Pastor here at Family Church. And it is always just a thank you. And it always is just an honor and a privilege to be able to be up here sharing a message with you uh, this morning. So as we continue on our summer series, it's called A Summer's Journey. Let's first acknowledge that any journey may require preparation, some planning, and uh, you know, it may at some point have some questions pop up. You know, um, you know, I think everyone at some point has been on a road trip or a journey, and no matter how well planned you, you plan it out, no matter how much preparation you put into it, uh, you may get a little lost or a little off track, right? Then what? Then we have to stop and we have to ask for direction. Now, I'm talking before the days of smartphones and, and GPS, but... Let me, let me ask the men, how many of you guys absolutely just love to stop and ask for directions? Right. I know, you know, you know, if you were anything like me, you, you would stay lost for hours before I would stop and ask for help. You know, there was a couple of times my wife and I would be on a trip, we get lost, she says, well, honey, just stop and pull over, ask that guy uh, for directions. And I said, that guy, that guy looks like a serial killer. We can't stop and ask him. And she said, honey, he's an 80 year old guy sitting on a park bench feeding the pigeons. <laughs> said, I don't know, he just looks evil. Let's keep going, let's keep going. So, you know, and, and I know, I got issues. I know, ladies. So I'm working on them. You know, but I think this situation is relative to any journey, whether, um, you know, it be a physical, a physical trip, a road trip, a spiritual journey, or even a recovery journey. You know, and it has, it has become one of my, um, you know, one of my greatest joys in life to serve in the Celebrate Recovery Ministry here at Family Church. You know, many people, including me, um, have questions that come up in a, in a recovery journey. You know, what happens next? Um, what if this happens? What if that happens? How do I navigate through this relationship? You know, and that's a good thing because we're asking questions. We're asking for direction, seeking that direction and, and finally asking for help. You know, and we work through those questions together as a team, um, as a group of like-minded uh, people seeking a closer relationship with God. And that's what recovery is all about. You know, in my own spiritual journey, um, which is probably the biggest part of my own recovery, you know, I had questions that came up um, about God, you know, about my past, about how God sees my past. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, chapter 43, verse 25, it says, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. You know, and that's what I want to talk about today, how we as infinitely flawed human beings deal with our past compared to how God sees our past. So let's pray. So Heavenly Father, as we come to you in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time together, the ability to get up and get out so we can enjoy your creation, Lord. Thank you for this gathering of believers assembled in this place to hear your word. Your word will never return void, and I pray these words fall on good ground, and we can all leave here in anticipation of your promises and blessings you have for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So here's a question for you. What if you could remove your mistakes from someone's memory? Yes. That harshly spoken word, okay? That shame-soaked failure, you know, that painfully uncovered lie, forgotten in an instant. You know, I have ached uh, for the chance to take back some of the things I have done and some of the damage I've caused over the course of my life. 
You know, perhaps some of you guys know that, those feelings as well. There may be some choice you made over the course of your life that um, still troubles you to this day. Maybe it was a relationship choice, maybe a decision about a child, whether you should keep it or even go through with the, with the birth. But we are not able to erase our mistakes from another person's memory. We cannot erase uh, the memory of our mistakes from our own memories. But I was under the impression as a child, I had the power to wipe sins from God's mind with one simple phrase, forgive me, forgive me. If I asked him for forgiveness, he would forget I did anything wrong. I mean, after all, this seems to be the implication of verses like Isaiah 43, 25. Let's look at it again. It says, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. That was from the Old Testament. Let's look at one from the New Testament. In Hebrews 8, 12, it says, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. So as I grew, you know, as a Christian, and I learned about God's omniscience and, and his omnipotence and this God who knows all, he sees all, the God who has witnessed my past, he sees your present, and he already knows all of our future. I began to have questions about the validity of, of this idea. You know, we read in 1 John 3.20 that God knows everything, even the depths of our sinful hearts. It says, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. How much does God know? Everything. everything. Say that again. Everything. There is nothing God does not already know. Past present, future. We cannot keep secrets from God. Hebrews 4.13 says we are all naked and exposed before God. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. So this brings me to the questions I had about God during my own um, Christian walk and, and trying to develop this relationship with God. How could a God who knows everything be unaware of my past sin? Even if God forgot, I certainly didn't, right? Could I somehow possess knowledge that he doesn't have? It sounds blasphemous just saying those words. But perhaps the underlying question is, what is God like? Is forgetfulness consistent with his character? His word reveals that he is unchanging, so he does not gain or lose knowledge, and his understanding is always perfect. Can we all agree on that? God is also just, so he must punish sin. So if these things are true, how could God know about our sin one moment and forget it in the next? Now, you know, I can reconcile that with us as humans, especially me. You know, my own recovery and, and in Celebrate Recovery, we talk about our, our hurts, our hang-ups, and our habits. I, and I'm sure many of us here, uh, have gone to great efforts and expense to forget our sins and mistakes. That is the hurts and the hang-ups, our sinful mistakes. The habit is a method we try to use as, as this big eraser, right, to wipe everything out. And, and I don't even care what that habit is. It could be drugs, alcohol, sex, lust, money, greed, power, control, gossip, or out-of-control mounts. It's all the same. Many times we put so much emphasis, you know, on the habit, you know, just trying to white knuckle our way through life that we ignore the root issue, you know, the hurts and the hangups, the sin and the mistakes. 
you know, and to be fully transparent, you know, I did that for years. I, I tried to erase my past with alcohol and drugs, just try to medicate it. You know, and thankfully quitting those, those things became easier for me because I developed a severe allergy to alcohol. Yeah, every time I drank, I broke out in handcuffs. <laughs> yeah, sticks can leave a nasty little rash, man. Oh, how I sometimes wish that was a joke. <laughs> but we are flawed human beings, infinitely flawed sometimes. Sometimes I can remember things from years ago in minute detail. But if you put me on a spot and you ask me what I had for breakfast yesterday, I was like, uh, I got nothing. I will draw a complete blank. So how could a just God turn a blind eye to wickedness? Although verses about God not remembering our sin may seem to stand in opposition to his omniscience and his justice, all of his word is true and he never contradicts himself. So what's going on here? That's my question. That was my question. The Bible often speaks of God remembering or, or not remembering, but not in the same way you know, we may talk about remembering to get the mail or, or forgetting a, a doctor's appointment. When God remembers, he responds. The, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word zakar is the translation for the word remember, remembrance, remembered. That Hebrew word zakar does not imply that God forgot and then suddenly, you know, just remembered something, but that he called something to mind. To remember in this sense is very intentional and is, is to act in accordance with something. When God remembers people's people, plans, and, and promises, he works in a way that aligns with his faithfulness. He remembered Noah when he acted in accordance with the promise to protect his family. In Genesis 8.1, it says, but God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in the boat. He sent a word to blow across the earth and the floodwaters began to recede. He remembered Zakar. He remembered Rachel in her barrenness and gave her a child according to his covenant to make Abraham's family a great nation. Genesis 30, 22. Then God remembered Rachel's plight and answered her prayers by enabling her to have children. And God's people frequently call him to remember them according to his steadfast love. Probably the most striking example of this is the thief on the cross. He says to Jesus, when you get to your kingdom, remember me today. And Jesus, what was his response? Today you will be with me in paradise. So likewise, God ceasing to remember our sin is not voluntary amnesia. But in his mercy, he does not act a, a act against us according to our sin. When the Lord forgives, he does not call our sins to mind to punish or berate us. He does not shake his head in disappointment and point his finger at it, shame on you. Instead, God removes our sin from us as it says in Psalm 103, 12. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. I will remember their sins no more. Doesn't mean our sin slips his mind, but that he doesn't hold it against us. And again, look at Hebrews 8:12. For I will be merciful, merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. He treats us as if we have never sinned. And so, God's omniscience remains intact. He knows, but he doesn't call to mind. He sees, but he doesn't chide. He abounds in love and compassion for his wayward children, just as we do for our wayward children when they drive us nuts and you just want to but we always come back and we love them. 
So that brings us to the next question I had. So what of his holiness? Does the Lord abandon justice for the sake of mercy? Does he overlook wickedness and and evil and let it go unavenged? Not at all. Listen to how God describes himself in the book of Exodus in chapter 34, verses six and seven. It says, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Yikes. God forgives, but he doesn't clear the guilty. He doesn't treat us according to our sins, but sins must be punished. How can this be? And we find the answer in the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the son of God who became man. He lived a life completely free from sin, yet took on himself the wrath of God that we all deserve. He died for our sins and was raised to life in victory over death. When we trust in him to save us from judgment, he becomes our representative. God no longer remembers us according to our sins, but according to Christ's perfection. His righteousness becomes our own. And God certainly punishes all sin, but if we are in Christ, that wrath falls on him. The cross strikingly displays in perfect harmony, aspects of the divine character of God that might otherwise appear irreconcilable. You know, and that is just relentless justice and bountiful mercy. You know, it's just astonishing how astonishing God's wrath is and how unimaginable is his love for us. So we do not serve a God whose memory is erased at the sound of a human confession. Instead, we serve a God who sees the sin that hides in the darkened corners of our hearts as bright as midday, yet who chooses to offer us mercy in Jesus Christ. We serve a Savior who knows us fully and still loves us deeply, even to the point of death. So we have a far greater hope than a God who who forgets. Our hope is a God who forgives. And that hope can be yours today, right now. If you have never had the opportunity to ask Jesus into your life, we, we wanna offer you that opportunity today. And here at Family Church, we do that by playing, praying a simple prayer all together, out loud, with the full support of everybody in the room. And it goes just like this. Dear God, God, I come to you, you. just like I am. am. Jesus, Jesus, I believe believe. you are my Lord Lord and my Savior. Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I invite you you. into my life, into my my heart, heart. to change me and make me new. Thank you you. for accepting me. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so glad we were able to connect together today. If this impacted you in any way, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like and subscribe to this channel and head over to FamilyChurchNY.com to take your next steps.